behave not ourselves disorderly among you. In other words, if you move with a person who is disorderly, if his ministry is disorderly, you begin to copy what he's doing and it begins to influence yours. If the person who taught you to do business did it in a haphazard way, it has a way of affecting your business also. Second Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busybodies. In other words, order is so necessary for everything you do. How many people are pastors here? Raise your hand, let me see. Order is very necessary for a ministry to grow. How many have their own business? Let me see your hand. If your business must go from good to great, you will have to bring order to your business. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 14 and 15 says, And if any man obey not our word, well, let's go to another scripture that says order, read it. Isaiah 38, 1 says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So what he was told to do was to put his house in order. The accidents on our road in Nigeria are products of disorder. The reason people die in our hospitals it's a product of disorder. Poverty of nations is a product of disorder. Some businesses would have done well where the owner of the business realized that it's not enough to pray and fast. It is important along with praying and fasting to put some order to his business. It is important for you to know that also for your Christian life, for your walking with God. Somebody say amen. Order up my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. In other words, when your steps are ordered, and you walk according to the counsel of God's word, in the area of your chosen field, you will do well. When Hezekiah was being told he would die, God told him, but well, before you die, go and put your house in order. Go and put your house in order. One scripture also says, Whoso of, also offered praise glorifies me, and to him that orders his conversation, the word conversation there actually means conduct, a right, will I show the salvation of God. So if you want to experience the hand of God, carry yourself right. Amen. First Chronicles 6.32 says, And they ministered before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of the congregation with singing unto, until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And then they waited on their office according to their order. If there is disorder in your ministry so that deacons don't even know their function differently from pastors, and pastors don't know their function from Leaders and leaders don't know their function. There will be problem and there will be continuous arguments and fights. Disorder is a major reason why nations don't do well. Disorder is a major reason why companies come to a grind. And there are some people who like disorder in your life. Anybody who promotes disorder in your life does not like your future. They don't like your progress because they like the disorder, it works for them. Are you with me? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 also says it is interesting. Uh, in, well, let me go to another scripture. In, in, in Genesis 1, 2, God said let there be light. Why? Because light exposes chaos. Before God's creative power was at work, order was first put in place. So the Bible says the whole world was in chaos and God then said, let there be what? And after he said, let there be light, then he began to create. Many pastors, businessmen, leaders around the world want to run things without first having the right light, the right information. 
Some people have never read a book on how to be a pastor before. They've never read a book on leadership before, but they want to lead. They've never sat in a leadership summit or seminar before. In fact, I remember meeting a guy some years back who used to boast that he doesn't read anything else but the Bible. Now, that may sound very spiritual, but very soon you'll be out of touch with your members because you will not know the real world in which they live. You, and, and you will not be able to communicate effectively to them. Are you with me? Order. For God, we see that order is necessary for productivity. So when God switched the Nepa of the universe on, thank God it wasn't Nepa. When God switched the light of the universe on, he then began to produce. And that product, and he's switching the light on, prevented error. Are you getting me? Have you ever woken in the middle of the night trying to go to toilet in a hotel which is not your home and the light is not on? And what happens sometimes? You bump on things. So when you don't switch the light on, that is why you bump against things in business, in relationships, because you have not switched the light on. Tell your neighbor to switch the light on. Yeah. So where there is no light, error follows. Order increases accuracy. Order meant that the first thing to be called forth was necessary at the time it was created. After God said, let there be light, what was the first thing he called for? Come on, Bible scholars. What was the first thing God called for? After light... What? The earth to be separated from the water. But before the earth was separated from the water, it called for light. After that, earth separated from water. Biologists, why light first? Help us. Huh? What? Come on, biologists. Why should God create light first? Can I see a hand? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, without light, life cannot survive. So God is a, I mean, we shouldn't say he's an intelligent God. He is knowledge himself. So the first thing he created was light. If there were no light, life cannot continue. If the world is in utter darkness and there is no light. This world will collapse. In fact, scientists have found out that in the core of this earth, under our feet, there is a generator that is perpetually heating this, this, this planet so that everything is working because it is producing enough energy to make the planet to run. So God created energy or light first because everything depended on it. After that, he called for the earth. Why did he call man last? Because he needed the land to stand on. He needed the animal to have dominion over. He needed the plants. He created everything after their order. Nothing came before it was needed. So you find people trying to start a business who already rent a shop before they know what they want to sell. You have people who want to start a business who have taken a loan from a bank with 25% interest, but they don't even know what they want to sell. Meanwhile, every month, 25% interest is going on it. So order is the first principle before there can be increase before there can be progress. Man was only created, though he is the apogee of God's creation, he was created when everything was in place for him. That is order. He was created on the sixth day, when everything has been put in place. Then man was created. Then man was created. We will not be able to look at much on the reasons for this order, because this is one big file where I have about 300 slides 
So we'll just cover a little of reasons for disorder and then we'll go to how to create order in your life. Disorder comes when you make a promise you cannot fulfill. Disorder comes when you attempt to do something you are not created to do. You are not created to be a pastor and you are trying to be one. If you are not created to, to run a business and you are trying to force yourself to do, disorder will come. When you attempt to produce a quality product without sufficient time to oversee it, to test it, or to plan it thoroughly, there will be disorder. So you find that when people want to just quickly make money and they rush and begin to produce, there certainly will be disorder. When you fail to gather adequate knowledge, or information on a job, a task, or product which you are attempting to produce. When you overshadow your day, your week, your life, there will be disorder because you are trying to be and you do not realize that even your own life needs order. Your home needs order. Your whole person needs order. The way you carry yourself, your business, your ministry needs order. When you respond to expectations of others, instead of the priority God has taught you to set, there will be disorder. Sometimes we want to please people, and so we go into things we are not called to do, and there is disorder created in the ministry, created in our life. This subject of order covers every aspect of life. Particularly as a leader, you have to never forget, if you must make progress, you must recognize the importance of order to the whole of your life. Somebody say order. It's very important that things be in their place. Things be in their proper place, in their rightful place. When you do that, then you can make progress. When you receive responsibility for something you are not capable to oversee or protect or care for, there will be disorder. Something you are not capable of protecting. Something you are not capable of overseeing or caring for. There will be disorder. Disorder comes when you give a task to someone unqualified to complete it accurately in time. In time needed and without passion. So you give an usher, doesn't know the importance of your vision as a church, a responsibility to carry out. You gave a man to be head of your traffic, he doesn't know that everybody who drives into your premises, if they will stay in your church, may depend on what happened in the car park, not inside the service. Because order is not just about how anointed the preacher is. It is about everything. Somebody say everything. Have you know, even in the packaging of what you do, order must be there. It must be part of it. Disorder occurs when others do not cooperate with the established deadline. Disorder will happen when you trust those to carry out instruction who are unworthy of the responsibility. They are unworthy of the responsibility. So disorder will occur. Disorder occurs when lesser things remove your eyes from your priorities in life. So once you do not have a balanced life, a balanced, a, a balanced way of doing things, and you give more importance to lesser things, you will not be able to make progress with bigger things. You must learn to handle the bigger things first, followed by the things that, that are slightly important. If every day of your life you are quenching fires and solving problems, it will be very difficult to make progress. Order is necessary for progress. Order is necessary for increase. Order is necessary for breakthrough. Order is necessary for blessing. Without order in your life, you cannot achieve much. Disorder will happen when you are 
using inadequate information gathered from wrong sources to try to pursue a major thing. Any business you want to do, you've got to get the right information. If you are a leader, if you are a pastor, you can't get the information from the last man you saw start a church. You might just copy what he's doing without knowing why he's doing what he's doing. Order is necessary. Order therefore means that you should get your information from the right place. And you should know why you are doing what you are doing. A young lady one time got married and uh, every morning when she fried bacon for her husband, she would cut the edges of the meat so sharp. She would reduce the meat, this bacon thing that is long, she would reduce it on the edge every morning. And the husband said, why are you wasting this thing and cutting it on every side? She said, that's how my mother used to cut it. So he made up his mind, he will ask his mother-in-law. When he met her, he said, my wife, whenever she fries bacon, she cuts the edges. When I asked that one, she said, that's how you do it. Why did you used to do it that way? She said, that's how my own mother did it. The young man would not rest. He decided to meet his grandmother-in-law. When he met his grandmother-in-law, he said, my wife cuts the bacon on this end, on this end, wasting the bacon. I asked my mother-in-law, she said she did the same thing because you did the same thing. Why did you do it that way? And the grandmother-in-law said, because when I was raising my daughter, I had a small frying pan. They did not ask why. They just copied what they saw. You can copy error without knowing. Disorder creates pain. When there's no traffic lights on your streets, you will have traffic jam. That traffic jam will be painful. When your roads are bad and you did not immediately mend the road from the taxes collected from the people if you collect tax at all. Accidents will happen. I'm sure there's some, no one here who has not lost a friend, a relation, or somebody they know in road accident. If you know somebody who died on road, in road accident in Nigeria, raise your hand. See, almost everyone, for everyone, you didn't raise your hand, I'm surprised. You know somebody who died in a road accident. Because our roads are disorderly, our systems are disorderly. The things work is a surprise. Where I'm staying for the past two days, light has not been taken. I am shocked. Eh? They did, never did not strike. You say, well, it's not possible. Well, I'm staying where it's possible. And it's never. So that's why I'm surprised. For the past two days now, for, I mean, fast, since the day before yesterday, light has not gone off. So I'm shocked. I am surprised. Oh, you want to move there? Not around. It's because I'm around. Amen, brother. <laughs> Order creates pain. I mean, disorder creates pain. Disorder creates tragedy. In the United Kingdom, you may think you have new tires. Then the, then the police stops you and put a coin in your tire to tell you it is already... But it, it is already, uh, what do you say, worn out. We bought a car in our church for me to drive in 2002. Did you hear when I called, said? 2002. The driver was driving just two months ago, and he was stopped by the police. They said the tire had worn out. Two of the tires. Now, why didn't he notice? Immediately, they put three points on his license. If you get 12 points, you can't drive for five years. So since you want to drive, you will follow order now. 
The tire which they said is worn out is new in Nigeria. Because I don't go anywhere. Home, church. Home, church. That's all I do. And they, they, they said it's worn out. They just put something and in his presence there. The thing tested and it was worn out by the standards. Now, they didn't save themselves. It was my life they were saving. It was his life they were saving. Once you permit, accommodate disorder, you create tragedy, you create accidents, you create depression, you create loss of time. No place loses time like Nigeria. The roads hold you for hours. And then you go to someone's office who said 4 o'clock. It is not 4 o'clock. You got there for, uh, they said it's coming soon. Have a seat, sir. So you sat down, thought you, but I thought you said it's around the corner. And they said, what I mean is, I just called him, it's on the mainland, it's coming to the island. This order, therefore, means loss of time. It means loss of money and energy. It can occur quickly. Disorder permitted can become disorder multiplied. It can occur quickly and it can multiply. Financial problems, family problems are often products of disorder. There are people who have earned money in their lives, but they have nothing to show for it because disorder has taken it away. There are people who have earned money and because of the system of our nation, it has gone unwasted. Family problems are products of disorder. A lot of sicknesses are as a result of disorder created physically. Then disorder creates stress and eventually diseases and more sickness. Once there is disorder in your family, in your life, everything begins to fall apart. You eat wrong, you drink things that are not right for your body. It, the same thing with ministry. Once you allow disorder, it begins to affect everything you do. Disorder occurs when you abandon the priorities of your day or the priorities of your life. Why are some people making progress and others are not? Some have sat down and they've asked themselves, what is the priority of my life? What do I want to achieve with my life? What do I want to do in life? Who do I want to become in life? Disorder, of course, when you attempt to do things which you were not called to create or created to do. Disorder, of course, when you try to do too many things, too many times, too many, too many things at the same time. You know, some people are trying to do so many things at the same time. You will only distinguish yourself in one key thing. Never forget. Life does not celebrate wandering generalities. Life does not celebrate wandering generalities. Disorder will occur if you don't know how to find your place. There will be disorder if you refuse to become whom God ordained you to be. There will be disorder when your focus is broken. There will be disorder when your focus is on your critics and not on your calling. Instead of you focusing on what you are called to do, you are worried who likes you and who doesn't like you. You are not a leader if you are too mindful of people's opinion. Of course, sometimes you need to listen so it helps you to become a better person. Amen. It helps you to achieve. It helps you to win. It helps you to overcome. Disorder, of course, when you haven't brought priorities, you haven't brought order, you have not taken responsibility to run your life well. There will be disorder when your focus is on your critics. Your weakness grows in the midst of disorder. Your weakness will grow in the midst of disorder. If you are in the ministry 
and you have an anger problem and there's disorder, what do you think will happen? You'll be an angry pastor. Whereas if there was order, you find that you are beginning to overcome your weakness. If there's disorder in a business and you are not good with, with documentation, your disorder will increase the problem. Am I clear? Disorder will happen when you place responsibility on those unprepared or untrained to accept, to accept order. There are some people who don't like an excellent church. Everybody will say they do. But once you begin to put order in place, some people don't like it. Why do you always insist we do this? Why must we always start exactly at the right time, even if four people came? Why couldn't we wait for the crowd? If you wait for the crowd, you will always wait. If you don't wait for them, they know that if they didn't come on time, they will meet the grace. Are you with me? When two people are in disagreement over divine order of things, there will be disorder because their perspectives don't agree. Can two walk except they be in agreement? So you need to have around you, for example, leaders who see what you see, who hear what you hear, who are going in the direction of where you are going. Is that clear? They see what you see, they hear what you hear, they are going in the direction of where you are going. Those who despise divine order often go any length to create disorder. Some people don't like the order around you, so they will do everything to make sure the order you have put around does not work. Am I clear? They will do everything, everything to create more disorder create more disorder. Let me give you a little more on disorder before I go to how to bring order to your life. Disorder will occur when you trust independent people, vendors, etc., who are unable or unwilling to cooperate to achieve a vision which has a deadline. You want to hold Uncommon Leader Summit. And you are looking for cheap contractors to supply the mobile toilet, to supply this, to supply that they will surprise you because you have not realized that other people can create disorder in your own orderly life. Am I clear? Some people don't value what you hold valuable. Some people do not see the vision you see. They don't hear the cry you hear. They don't see what you see. Therefore, they create problem for you. Have you tried to run a business or run a program and the supplier did not bring it on time and put you in a mess, caused a disappointment. The printer was supposed to deliver. You told him you are doing a presentation and he's, bring, he's giving you a date at the last minute, which is after the presentation. And if you don't pay him, the next thing is gone to the police to report you. So this order of course, when you leave some things in the hand of people, who don't feel what you feel. Same thing with ministry. That is why a good pastor must continue to train people so they see the vision, they hear the vision, they know the vision, they know where you are going, they know where the ministry is going, and they are carried along. Somebody say amen. When people want a position they've not been assigned to, there will be disorder. Sometimes people aspire for his position which they have not prayed for, which they have not matured for, which they are not qualified for. When people desire such, there will be disorder. Disorder is a big problem in ministry, a big problem in, in, in church growth, a big problem. Can you hear me? All right. So when people when, a, when people want a position they are not assigned to, there will be disorder. Disorder will multiply if you do not confront those who are creating it. 
you need to confront them. Disorder is an evidence that some people are not meant together. If you have a team and there's always conflict, maybe you shouldn't be behave not ourselves disorderly among you. In other words, if you move with a person who is disorderly, if his ministry is disorderly, you begin to copy what he's doing and it begins to influence yours. If the person who taught you to do business did it in a haphazard way, it has a way of affecting your business also. Second Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. In other words, order is so necessary for everything you do. How many people are pastors here? Raise your hand, let me see. Order is very necessary for a ministry to grow. How many have their own business? Let me see your hand. If your business must go from good to great, you will have to bring order to your business. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 14 and 15 says, And if any man obey not our word, well, let's go to another scripture that says order, read it. Isaiah 38, 1 says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So what he was told to do was to put his house in order. The accidents on our road in Nigeria are products of disorder. The reason people die in our hospitals it's a product of disorder. Poverty of nations is a product of disorder. Some businesses would have done well where the owner of the business realized that it's not enough to pray and fast. It is important along with praying and fasting to put some order that is perpetually hitting this, this, this planet so that everything is working because it is producing enough energy to make the planet to run. So God created energy or light first because everything depended on it. After that, he called for the earth. Why did he call man last? Because he needed the land to stand on. He needed the animal to have dominion over. He needed the plants. He created everything after their order. Nothing came before it was needed. So you find people trying to start a business who already rent a shop before they know what they want to sell. You have people who want to start a business who have taken a loan from a bank with 25% interest, but they don't even know what they want to sell. Meanwhile, every month, 25% interest is going on it. So order is the first principle before there can be increase before there can be progress. Man was only created, though he is the apogee of God's creation, he was created when everything was in place for him. That is order. He was created on the sixth day, when everything has been put in place. Then man was created. Then man was created. We will not be able to look at much on the reasons for disorder, because this is one big file where I have about 300 slides. So we'll just cover a little of reasons for disorder, and then we'll go to how to create order in your life. Disorder comes when you make the light is not on. And what happens sometimes? You bump on things. So when you don't switch the light on, that is why you bump against things in business, in relationships, because you have not switched the light on. Tell your neighbor to switch the light on. Man. So where there is no light, error follows. Order increases accuracy. Order meant that the first thing to be called for was necessary at the time it was created. After God said, let there be light, what was the first thing he called for? 
Come on, Bible scholars. What was the first thing God called for? After light. What? The earth to be separated from the water. But before the earth was separated from the water, he called for light. After that, earth separated from water. Biologists, why light first? Help us. Huh? What? Come on, biologists. Why should God create light first? Can I see a hand? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, without light, life cannot survive. So God is a, I mean, we shouldn't say he's an intelligent God. He is knowledge himself. So the first thing he created was light. If there were no light, life cannot continue. If the world is in utter darkness and there is no light, this world will collapse. In fact, scientists have found out that in the core of this earth, under our feet, there is a generator progress because they like the disorder. It works for them. Are you with me? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 also says it is interesting. Uh, in, well, let me go to another scripture. In, in, in Genesis 1 2, God said let there be light. Why? Because light exposes chaos. Before God's creative power was at work, order was first put in place. So the Bible says the whole world was in chaos and God then said, let there be what? And after he said, let there be light, then he began to create. Many pastors, businessmen, leaders around the world want to run things without first having the right light, the right information. Some people have never read a book on how to be a pastor before. They've never read a book on leadership before, but they want to lead. They've never sat in a leadership summit or seminar before. In fact, I remember meeting a guy some years back who used to boast that he doesn't read anything else but the Bible. Now, that may sound very spiritual, but very soon you'll be out of touch with your members because you will not know the real world in which they live. And, and you will not be able to communicate effectively to them. Are you with me? Order. For God, we see that order is necessary for productivity. So when God switched the Nepa of the universe on, thank God it wasn't Nepa. When God switched the light of the universe on, he then began to produce. And that production, and he's switching the light on prevented error. Are you getting me? Have you ever woken in the middle of the night trying to go to toilet in a hotel which is not your home and that to his business? It is important for you to know that also for your Christian life, for your walking with God. Somebody say amen. Order up my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. In other words, when your steps are ordered and you walk according to the counsel of God's word in the area of your chosen field, you will do well. When Hezekiah was being told he will die, God told him, but well, before you die, go and put your house in order. Go and put your house in order. One scripture also says, Whoso of also offered praise glorifies me unto him that orders his conversation. The word conversation there actually means conduct. A right will I show the salvation of God. So if you want to experience the hand of God, carry yourself right. Amen. First Chronicles 6.32 says, And they ministered before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of the congregation with singing unto until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And then they waited on their office according to their order. If there is disorder in your ministry so that deacons don't even know their function differently from pastors, and pastors don't know their function 
from leaders and leaders don't know their function. There will be problem and there will be continuous arguments and fights. Disorder is a major reason why nations don't do well. Disorder is a major reason why companies come to a grind. And there are some people who like disorder in your life. Anybody who promotes disorder in your life does not like your future. They don't like your 